In this video, we're going to take a look at physical and chemical properties of matter. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to identify some physical and chemical properties for different types of matter, and also be able to determine whether a physical property is qualitative or quantitative. Now, before we get into physical and chemical properties, I do want to just quickly review the different state changes of matter that we have. So let's just, this should just be review for you, but going from a solid to a liquid is known as melting. Going from a liquid to a solid is freezing. And then if we go over to liquid to a gas, that's evaporation. And going from a gas to a liquid is condensation. And then finally, our gas to solid changes. Going from a solid to a gas is called sublimation. And going from a gas to a solid is called deposition. So it's just worthwhile to know those state changes because they will come up throughout the remainder of this unit. Now let's talk about some of the properties of matter. I really like this flow chart because it helps you to determine whether a property is physical or chemical. So let's take a look at this. Now, properties of matter refer to the qualities or attributes that distinguish one sample of matter from another. Um, if we take a look at matter itself, then we can ask ourselves, are the properties determined without changing the identity of the substance? So physical properties are those properties that can be observed or measured without changing the composition of matter. Physical properties are used to um, observe and describe matter, and they can be further classified as either something called extensive or intensive. So what does this mean? Well, if we take a physical property, we can ask if the property depends on the amount, or really we should say the, uh, the quantity of substance. If it does depend on the quantity of substance, so things like mass, volume, length, shape, those all depend on how much of the matter that we have. And so those are considered to be extensive. Intensive physical properties are ones that doesn't, it doesn't matter how much or what quantity we have of the matter itself. So the color, it doesn't matter how much you have of that matter, the color is not changing. Same with things like melting point, boiling point, and density. They all remain the same without changing the amount or the quantity of that substance that we have. Now, if the properties of matter are determined by having to change the substance, those are called our chemical properties. And chemical properties of matter really describe its potential to undergo some sort of chemical change or reaction, um, depending on its composition. So it's often quite difficult to define a chemical property without using the word change, because they are undergoing change. And Right now, uh, you're not going to be able to look at a compound or formula and be able to state some chemical properties. That's pretty hard to do without having a little bit more background understanding in chemistry. But eventually, you should be able to look at a formula of a compound and state some sort of chemical property. For this course, though, you are not expected to be able to do this. Uh, some examples of different type, types of chemical properties are things like hydrogen. Hydrogen gas has the potential to ignite and explode given the right conditions. So that's a chemical property. Or metals in general will typically react with an acid. And so, for example, zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid and it produces hydrogen gas. So that would be a chemical property. Now, physical, and physical properties can also be 
broken down into qualitative or quantitative properties. So just kind of reviewing these two terms, qualitative really depend on your five senses. So what you see, hear, smell, feel, or taste. Whereas quantitative are numbers based or numbers driven. And so these types of properties will have units associated with it. So looking at some examples of qualitative properties, those could be things like color, sounds, smell, feel or texture or taste. Taste is not one we do in the lab though. So just kind of keep that one in mind. And then quantitative having numbers, some examples are things like mass, volume, temperature, Conductivity, which has these weird units of S over M, which is Siemens per meter. It's just how it's um, measured and the units it goes with. Solubility has units of grams per 100 grams of water that it's dissolved in. Density might have units of grams per milliliter. So those are all examples of quantitative physical properties. That's it for this lesson. Let's move on to our next task.